everyone has been in the comments angrily posting about freebie Kia and uh, don't worry we are going to talk about it not just Kia but the rest of uh, the party as well because we're going to start off with this clip of Wes Streeting which I honestly thought was quite shocking and showed him to be pretty out of touch so this was uh, with the BBC at Labour conference take a listen to this I'm really proud of people who want to contribute not just their time and volunteering but their money to our politics. It is a noble pursuit just like giving to charity and we don't recognise that enough. The alternative is we ask taxpayers to fund our politics. I think they'd rather their taxes went into the NHS and our schools or stayed in their own pockets. He's so going to a Taylor Swift concert, a noble call. I'm sure Keir will shake it off. But let me say, Nick, I'm absolutely delighted in the BBC's newfound conviction that no one should be paid more than the Prime Minister, that they shouldn't give or receive hospitality, and will judge the performance yeah. on the social media mentions. I'm really you can get enough mansions, though. You can get mansions and jackets and glasses. You can get gifts for thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds, but you can't give £25. Pounds. Okay, good. Good to know. Yeah, I, well, I mean, the, the problem here, guys, so, so this was yeah. in response to the all the accusations about all the Lord Ali freebies, right? And mm. Wes Streeting has just justified it by saying, oh, it's a very noble thing to do, like giving to charity. If Lord Ali was just donating to what the party essentially needs to function, then OK. But Taylor Swift t tickets, glasses that cost thousands of pounds, Keir Starmer having some big fancy box at football games, right? You don't need that. It's completely unnecessary. And to liken that yeah. to, say, giving to charity to save starving children in Africa, I, I think is pretty out of touch, if you ask me. And then he justifies it again by saying in that clip that, oh, well, it's great that Lord Ali has contributed because if he didn't, we'd have to pay for all this stuff with your taxpayer money and instead and i'm sure people would rather keep their money and i'm like hang on you don't need that stuff at all what you know what kind of high horse are you living on where you think that having all of these fancy freebies designer gloves designer glasses huge elite boxes to be in at football games rather than having to you know be with us plebs uh, in the stalls that's not something taxpayers should be paying for you don't need it at all i mean Eunice, what do you think of this? How do you think this is going to affect West Streeting's image? Do you think Labour members are going to buy this? No, because again, it's corruption at its finest. And you know, this Labour Party is probably one of the most corrupt political parties I've seen in this country for a long time. Because they pretend they are for the working man, they're far left, but actually their policies hurt the working man. As you know, the winter fuel payments, you know, raising taxes on working class and middle class people so i don't know why and how they're able to get away with this at the same time they get gifts from their millionaire friends to go and sit in a box at arsenal or get you know glasses for thousands of pounds so you know it's like almost like the communist soviet union where the guy at the top was getting all the freebies he's living the good life and everyone else was poor obviously not that extreme but this is like a new marxist government and i just find them extremely disingenuous and extremely corrupt mm. 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 Nicholas? Well, I mean, uh, to go just circle back to the Farage thing, one of my favourite moments from the Reform Conference was when he took the stage and immediately got a pair of glasses out of his pocket. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're crowd. gonna show that actually. You know yes, what? Let's show yes. let's show that now. Um yeah. seeing as I have that one open. So this is what Nigel Farage did to take the piss out of Freebie Starmer, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Loved it. Wow. Now just, uh, just give me a second. Just give me a second. <laughs> Do you like them? <laughs> Very expensive. But guess what? I bought them myself. How about that? Hey. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that got That's quite up. a cheer, didn't it? But just just before I come back to you, I just want to uh, go through a couple more things uh, on, on this story before we talk about it all. So this is a new thing that we've just had revealed sort of today and, and uh, or yesterday, uh, which I thought well, again, was just absolutely shocking. So read the glasses. Starmer got, I think it was 18 grand 
from Lord Ali to spend on clothes and glasses. His glasses cost thousands each. I mean, I thought that I was splashing the cast when I decided to get a pair that cost about 200 quid from Vision Express, but I guess that that was cheap. Um, But this story has come out, which I think is quite shocking, especially in light of the fact that Kia Starmer is currently uh, pursuing his very controversial policy of slapping VAT on private school fees, which is, you know, there are a lot of families that can only just they count the pennies to make the fees they're not all rich millionaires and this is going to push a lot of those people um, out of access to that education and i think it's super hypocritical when we've just found this out so more money has come from lord ali um in the form of 20 grand for keir starmer's son to have a quiet place to stay during his gcse exams and you're thinking well how long did he put him up for because even if the kid was staying, let's say they got him his own flat and he was staying there for a year. I mean, 20 grand is still quite a lot um, for a place, but it wasn't for that long. So the dates of the stay were from the 29th of May to the 13th of July. 20 grand for a stay that short. I mean, where the hell were they putting him up in some huge mansion? And then it also doesn't quite add up when you think of the dates of the exam. So the exam started... 20 days before he supposedly got this quiet place on the 9th of May and it finished well before on the 19th of June. So this just doesn't add up what is going on. And this was Mm. the excuse that Keir Starmer gave, which, you know, again, like Wes Streeting's excuse there for likening Lord Ali's money to giving to charity. I just think it's pathetic. He says, my boy 16 was in the middle of his GCSEs. I made him a promise, a promise that he would be able to get to his school, do his exams without being disturbed. We have lots of journalists outside our house where we live, and I'm not complaining about that. That's fine. But if you're a 16 year old trying to do your GCSEs and it's your one chance in life, I promised him we would move somewhere, get out of the house and go somewhere where he could peacefully uh, be peacefully studying now i can understand if you're a high profile politician your life is disturbed by all these journalists outside your house and whatnot maybe the kid needs a bit of peace and quiet most people would say go and stay at auntie's house go stay at grandma's house where it's a bit quieter or if the kid's really lucky okay maybe you spend a couple of grand on getting him a little little studio flat or whatever it is where he can go study for a month, but 20 grand in donor money just for somewhere to stay. I mean, it's just bonkers. And just before we uh, chat about all this Lord Ali stuff, I just want to look at Bridget Phillipson's excuse for all this money um, from Lord Ali. This was um, Camilla Tomini um, talking about the, uh, you know, the, the birthday party uh, that Lord Ali paid for, and she claims it was a work event. And I think Camilla Tomney did a very good job here. About this story in the Mail on Sunday, the sure. suggestion that Lord Ali paid thousands for Education Secretary's 40th birthday party. Is that true? So what Lord Ali, who's a long-standing Labour peer, paid for was two events when I was Shadow Education Secretary, one ahead of my 40th birthday, that was a good opportunity in a professional context to yeah. get journalists, education people, trade unionists and MPs along. Yes. The second event... Um, a reception for journalists including those working in the education press again in a professional context um, to discuss the work of what so so the birthday element was what then I don't quite get it 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 was an official do for you as shadow education secretary but you also had some cake oh we didn't have any cake oh there's a picture of you with some cake is that a different that that, that was on my actual birthday (laughs) got it okay Um, in my office so you do have a birthday celebration but it's part of a department it was when I was shadow. It was when I was shadow education secretary. Okay. So it was ahead of the election. I should just say I didn't even invite my own family along to this. It was very okay. much in a professional Has context. Has Lord Ali ever donated to your wardrobe, your spectacles? Has he ever loaned you an apartment in London or New York? No, everything that's been donated to me has yes. been declared in line with the rules. What I would say about Lord Ali is that he's been a Labour peer for I think over 25 years. Yes. Um, donates to the Labour Party, to Labour oh. politicians, because he wants a Labour government. But he got a temporary Downing Street pass. Uh, from Sue Gray, we hear today, Labour Party have been very reluctant to say who sanctioned this pass. It was Sue Gray. That happened after he donated £10,000 to Leon Conlon's campaign. Leon Conlon is now the MP for Beckingham and Penge. He's also Sue Gray's son. There's something quite murky about that. I think if that arrangement had happened under a Tory government, ministers like you would be on the airwaves having a real go at the opposition about that. 
I think you've got a Labour peer, a very, very long-standing Labour peer, yeah. who donates to Labour politicians, well, Labour candidates. Well, he donated to two campaigns, and one of them was Conlon's. No, he's, and he's Sue Gray's... He, in an election campaign, sure. as far as just for the election campaign, he gives money to Sue Gray's son, and the next thing we know, he gets a Downing Street pass. You have to admit, that looks a bit dodgy. He's donated to lots of Labour candidates and politicians. Why pass? Why does he need a Downing Street pass? Um, as I understand it, he no longer has a Downing Why Street did pass. Why one? I, I, I genuinely don't know the circumstances <laughs> of that. Uh, cool. uh, come on. Uh, no, I think the reason that um, you know he donates to Labour politicians mm -hmm. is because he wanted to secure a Labour government. That's what he's done over two decades. All right. Absolutely pathetic excuses there um, from Bridget Phillipson. And that was just one of many interviews that she did with various outlets across Labour conference, just trying to excuse this scandal and not take any responsibility or any blame for any wrongdoing um, whatsoever. And we saw Angela Rayner doing a similar thing, dis defending herself about the use of this fancy penthouse in New York. I mean, Eunice, do you yeah. think optics wise, do you think it's better for the Labour Party to keep doing what they're doing, where they just keep defending themselves, insisting they've done nothing wrong? Or do you think that people, the British public would appreciate a bit of humility and for them to put their hands up and say, look, we messed up? I mean, again, as I said, they're extremely corrupt and it's quite funny because, you know, Nigel Farage always, you know, walks out with these tailor-made suits and they all look nice. I'm a fan of looking after yourself and looking good. Yeah. And they, they made the story about him that, oh, well, he's an MP. He earned like a million last year or over a hundred grand last year from GB News. That has a corrupting. But the guy made his money on GB News because he worked and he's the figurehead of GB News. So. He deserves every single penny that he gets from GB News. Why do I care how rich a politician is? As a matter of fact, I prefer rich politicians because then they don't really get into politics to make money. Whereas Labour, all their MPs, I just feel like they are crony capitalists and they get into politics to make money. So they have an incentive. And Keir Starmer, he's using donor money to send his son to a quiet place so he can study as you said chloe the dates don't make sense but then how is he even allowed to do such a thing that money mm. is supposed to be spent on party to keep the party going to have conferences you know to expand the parties recruit staff etc 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 so i think this should go to court actually these kind of things should go to court and be trialed as corruption cases because this is corruption you're just giving free gifts to your friends to your family members you're setting up all these events and you're going on all partying with donor money that you're not supposed to do that i'm pretty sure there's a law against that so why are they not being prosecuted for this mm, yeah it seems like mm. politicians just don't seem to get held to account at all we say oh we hold them to account because yeah. they have elections but they they get yeah. they tell us all these lies to get in and then they just do whatever they want and break all of the um, all of the rules. I mean, I know that Parliament is able to sort of investigate people and sometimes they suspend them for a few days. Give I guarantee a, you, if this was Nigel wrist, Farage, he would be prosecuted. I guarantee yeah, you. If, if yeah. Nigel oh, Farage completely. does something like this, he would have been in the courts right now. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just Nicholas, just going back to the education thing. So, yeah, just thought this comment was funny from NRH O'Connor. Uh, from the river to the sea, Stasi Sama's son goes private for free. You know, it just it just seems pretty hypocritical when he's saying oh we need to crack down on private schools it's not fair that people have an advantage but then your son gets to have 20 grand spent on some fancy place so that he can study uh, in quiet i mean you know remember what happened in, in covid when we had lockdown when so many some kids who had a big house with their own little study room and whatnot and fast wi-fi and good tech they did fine but you had plenty of kids who weren't at private school um, didn't have great online learning and then were in a house where you had everyone in the family packed around the kitchen table on the slowest Wi-Fi just trying to get through their GCSEs. You know, don't you think this just seems like quite a slap in the face? Oh, it's a massive slap in the face. And the Labour Party are now so honest about their elitism. They are champagne socialists and the champagne is mm. bought yeah. by Lord Alley. What a joke. What a complete and utter joke. And the fact of the matter is, is, you know, Bridget Phillips, she keeps claiming how all Lord Ali is doing is trying to help Labour win elections. Well, I don't see how giving Stalin's son 20 grand is going to win Labour the election. No. I, it, it's quite clear that Ali is it buying It seems like influence. buying privilege. And yeah. also, what are you... 
Exactly. And also, what exactly was Keir Starmer's son doing? Because as you point out, the exams have begun three weeks earlier, and I find it very odd how he decided to keep this place throughout June. Now, I remember when my exams ended at school, they were over by June. All were over by June. So what exactly was he doing in this place with 20 grand? What was he doing? What was he doing? Did Lord Ali pay for Keir Starmer's son to go out on the one massive bender until the middle of July? Probably mm. fine. We'll never know. But it seems oddly suspicious how he just so happens to need this quote unquote quiet place after the exams, at least most of them are already over. I just don't mm. buy it. And the yeah. fact that Starmer, yeah. who, I mean, whatever this money was used for, I also don't like the fact that Starmer was so quick to throw his own son under the bus by involving him in all of this. Like, oh, no, couldn't possibly be me. It was my son this money was for. It, it, it's the yeah. measure of a man how he treats his child. And he has just exposed his kid to all manner of public scrutiny. He's not doing him but, any favor. Yeah, but another caveat to this, as you said, he makes fun of people that went into private schools and how they're so spoiled and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I came from a working class family. My dad used to be a tool maker. All of these lies he comes up with. And then afterwards, I mean, your son can go and get a room in downtown Downing Street and study quietly by himself. You know, this is just the biggest excuse. Either your son is the biggest spoiled brat ever and you've done a terrible job of raising him, or you're lying about something, you probably sent him away and you probably loaned it that money or you just paid for him to go and party, as you said, because I remember the same thing. I have a little brother. He's 17 years old. He had his GCSEs and all his GCSEs were over by June. So how is this guy keeping it by middle of July? It just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something more to this, something way more to this. Yeah. And of course, this is a massive slap in the face, as Chloe pointed out, to all the people who mm -hmm. during the pandemic were apt, had their educations wrecked. I mean, my final year was totally ruined by the pandemic, having to rely on very terrible Wi-Fi, which made my picture quality look astounding right now. I mean, my picture quality right now is 4K compared to what I used to have because of the horrendous Wi-Fi. And it's a miracle that anybody passed absolute mm. miracle and they're just flaunting their elitism they're, 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 they think that they're invincible they think the British public aren't going to care but you know what we do care and I'll tell you right now people are not going to forget about this next year and they're certainly not going to forget about this when the polls open in five years time have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter well send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed